Hey everybody, Shane Presley here with Rock Paper Podcast. Hey, I have a bunch of exciting news to share with you. Uh, first off, June 11th, join us at Naked Vine for uh, one year of the Singer-Songwriter Storytelling Showcase. And I'll be bringing along my good friends Susie Bassino and Michael Eisenbys of Find a Drive and Michael Flynn and Dustin Brown of Waiting for Flynn. So four riders sitting on stools, sharing stories behind these songs. Uh, we'll have some grilled cheese going that night uh, also, so come on out hungry. And uh, so live music starts at 7. We'll have a $10 cover for the evening and all kinds of wine, whiskey, tequila, and local craft beers for you. Uh, so come on out and celebrate with us. If you haven't been out to Naked Vine, let me tell you about those my friends out there. Uh, Brian's been running a great spot, bringing all kinds of wonderful music out there to Chesterfield, Missouri. You can swing by and visit them for some great live music this week on Thursday, May 30th. Phil and Carson of the Scandaleros out there. On May 31st, Slop Arm. And on Saturday, June 1st, The Big Idea. Uh, you can find all these listings and more at uh, their website, nakedvine.net. Be sure to follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Uh, we also uh, want to tell you about another big party coming up. We're celebrating five years of Rock Paper Podcast on June 22nd at Broadway Oyster Bar. And uh, this party, uh, I'm really excited about it. I mean, it's crazy to think that this show's already going five years. But we're going to... We're going to do it up big with Amanda Fish Band, Tony Campanella Band, and Odds Lane. Again, uh, June 22nd, Broadway Oyster Bar. It's a $8 cover for the evening. Uh, music starts 10 uh, o'clock, and we'll have great food, of course, from Broadway Oyster Bar. We'll have cold drinks all night long. Do not miss this party, guys. It's going to be a fun one. Can't wait to see you all there. And... Extra added bonus, it'll be my 34th birthday party too, so I'm really excited to celebrate with all of you. Uh, let me uh, tell you also about my friends at Joseph Meyer Club. If you haven't checked it out yet, head on over to josephmeyerclub.com and try out their brand new foaming aftershave. I've been using it myself. I love it. I think it's a wonderful product, and I think you all will really like it too. You can try it today for 20% off using my promo code RPPJMC20 during checkout. Again, josephmeyerclub.com. Be sure to follow along with them also on Facebook. Uh, well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, I hope you are having a great day today. And uh, before I get out of here, I want to give a big shout-out to... Rock University Festival Awards. Um, they named this show Best Podcast this year. Took home the award uh, on Sunday night. Uh, it was it was an absolute thrill. I'm so thank you all for voting. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for uh, sticking with me for five years now. Let's uh, let's keep this thing going. So I appreciate you all. And again, have a great day. Thanks everybody. Um, the podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio, it's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. Hey, this is Ellen Hilton Cook and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast, y'all.
Everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Hanging out today at the Pocket, next to the world famous Off Broadway, and uh, hanging out today with Ellen Hilton Cook. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thanks for having me. This is uh, this is cool. This has kind of been a, a long time in the making, for sure. We've been <laughs> no kidding. We, we uh, we've been talking about doing this for a while, and we're finally uh, we got it all worked out. And we're here and. Uh, this is exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here with you and talking about everything you're up to. And um, this, but this is, uh, I guess this is really like our, I mean, we've talked, we've, we've bumped into each other at shows and stuff, yeah. but like, this is the first time we really get into talk, I think, like, you know, having a proper conversation. So, uh, yeah. um, so I'm glad, uh, I'm glad it's worked out today. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. This, uh, this is cool because t- to, uh, I know, like, I've been following some of your stuff for a few years now, and uh, and I know you've gone through a name change now, and uh, and all this stuff. So, like, it's kind of uh, fun to talk about, uh, I guess, a little bit of the evolution yeah. of, of Ellen and all this stuff, and and uh, where we're at today. So, I guess, but let's can you we uh, can you fill me in on some of the backstory? I guess some of the uh, I, uh, you always grew up around St. Louis, or born and raised St. Louis, yeah. Then. Yeah. Um, I was born on the South side and then, oh yeah, I was born on the South side and then I was, I went to elementary school in university city and then we moved to Webster Groves. Um, my parents, I guess I started playing, like I remember my grandparents having like one of those little organs, a tiny little air seventies organs. And I just remember being able to like play the black keys and just figuring out like Mary had a little lamb and I would just sit in this laundry room where that organ was and play it. And then my parents um, got a free upright piano from a church and uh, 
and it just kind of evolved from there. Like I started playing by ear. They tried to teach me and get me lessons, but um, that's something that I want to do eventually is teach piano lessons that are fun. Um, so I'm self-taught, but I would like to, I feel like a lot of, uh, a lot of piano classes or lessons are really rigid and it's all about posture and, you know, and that's why everybody gives up and plays guitar. Not like, uh, you know what I mean? Everybody's like, sure. I want to rock. And so, um, I've been trying to put the rock in piano and give it a little more weight for a long time now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every day after school, I would just come home and play piano. And it seemed to be like the only thing that's ever really made sense was just, uh, it's so percussive. So if you have any rage in oh, yeah. you, it's like, bang, bang, like, get it out. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's always been, always been piano then? Like that it's was always your, been that, piano. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if... Uh, if in, yeah, have you started with anything else uh, in school or anything? But well, uh, I guess I was in choir. All right. Um, one time I got a lead, a lead role in choir for the nursing home uh, concert that All we right. did. You want to hear it? Yeah. It's really bad. <laughs> 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 Why did I set myself up for this? <laughs> okay. It was like. I was so proud too, uh, but yeah, we had to in like third grade choir. We had to go and um, sing for some old folks at a nursing home, and the song was like, "All of the people all around the world, let them shine, let them shine in harmony." Uh, and sorry, that's my falsetto, so. Uh, <laughs> I, it sounded way better back in 1994, <laughs> whatever that was. <laughs> All right. Uh, I can't believe you remember that, though. That's uh, Some things never, yeah. ever leave my head. <laughs> right. But other things just... Just, just plays on a loop all day. Like, all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 90s were all about that. Right. Like, um, it was all about, like, everybody holding hands and getting along and... We are the world. We are the world type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. There well, there was another there was this rainforest video that just went the rainforest. The <laughs> tropical rainforest. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Nostalgia. Oh yeah. Uh well that uh yeah, I I remember um I remember doing a little bit of that. Not I don't think I ever got to that part. Uh we sing in any lead, but I do remember, like, obviously, uh, you know, elementary music, uh, singing some of the choir stuff. Like, that's what I thought was fun, like, when back in those days, like, when the, everybody was in the choir kind of thing in, yeah. in class and everybody had a recorder or whatever it was. You know, we all, like, there was a lot of music in school back, you know, when, whenever I was growing up and stuff. So that's what it was exciting, like, but I never really took to it. I mean, like, I, I love music, but he just never had a neck to, to play. I mean, I wish we had 15,000 million trillion more people <sighs> like that, though, because I feel like, I mean, all my friends are musicians, but like, I really, really appreciate the people that are equally as passionate about music that don't play it and are on the like the audience end. Yeah. I think it's um, especially people that are like key in on passionate equally as passionate because i mean there's people who can like take or leave music and there's people like you that you mean you follow every single kind of music you have done more for this st louis music scene than like most of the publications that i see well, thank and you. um yeah you're like you're like a literal angel shane <laughs> Presley. <laughs> oh well, thank you yeah i'm putting that on my uh on my bio <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's gonna be a nice pull quote for the uh, autobiography for but, sure. Yeah. You know, that, uh, that, uh, I don't know. I just, something I really, I mean, I love, uh, I love what we have happening here. Um, I mean, uh, and I've, let alone it's great music. That's the first part of it, but I've met all these people and they're all super cool people too. So like, why wouldn't you want to root for them and stuff? Yeah. Or, you know, these are all, all become a bunch of my best friends. And it's, so it's just exciting to see your friends doing cool stuff and for sure. trying to do my part to help them all out. Uh, so I guess, uh, so you're playing, uh, some piano, you're singing yeah. in some choir and, uh, 
but I guess let's get to uh, when you start kind of moving into your originals and stuff. Like when when does that really get going for you? Like wanting to write your own music and things. And I've definitely always been like a performer type. Like a like I used to just get dressed up, and then my parents in the apartment I grew up in there were there was like this arch like divider thing in between the living room and the dining room. And in my head, the arch was like, you know, the curtains to the stage. And um, my parents would just like sit in the living room and I would go and get dressed up and I would just be like, dad, put on the record. And he'd put on like this classical record and I would just like dance forever or I'd sing or um, it's just always been so I think I think my grandma told me that when I was a little girl, I like came out with like pearls and this whole like sequin outfit on. I must have been like five or six, and I just like fell on the couch and like dramatically fell on the couch, like like I fainted or something, <laughs> and said, "When I grow up, I want to play in jazz bars." And I don't know how I've made that happen, but I guess yeah. I've always wanted to do that. Um, Self-fulfilled prophecy. Yeah, I guess there. I've always wanted to be a performer. Um, I was my mother. Uh, my mother was a writer. She passed away in 2011, uh, but she was a very creative soul. And my father's uh, he was into journalism. He's now a, a truck driver, but uh, you know, I feel like he's going to tie those two together eventually, like journalism and truck driving. Oh, yeah. Sounds kind of cool. Uh, but I definitely got a lot of my creativity and my fashion sense and uh, my loudness from my mom. And uh, I got into poetry when I, when I was in middle school and I was very much so like, uh, you know, kind of, I've always been a weirdo. Uh, like I was, I remember moving from U City to Webster and like, getting this feeling like, holy crap, this is a total culture shock for me. Uh, it was very different. So I was like, I just never felt like I belonged in a group of people, you know? Like, I, I think I was too weird for, like, preppy kids and then also too normal for, like, the weird kids. <laughs> and so, uh, I don't know. Um, but I started, I started writing, like, putting things together I guess when I was 13 or 14, I started just kind of like tying in the poetry that I was working on in class to music and like putting that all together. Um, I had this song when I was, I kind of must have been 13 or 14. We had the uh, Sunday school talent show and I wrote this song called Permanent P PMS. <laughs> Uh, Cause like, I guess the only way I, I thought like I should, and I still kind of default to angst, but, uh, <laughs> I definitely, it was like, I'm sunny, I'm dark, I'm, I'm sunshine, I'm rain, I'm crazy, I'm sane, I'm permanent PMS. And it's just like this, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And it was like a blues song. It was like, I'm sunshine, doo -doo, I'm rain. I'm summer, I'm pain, I'm permanent PMS. I don't know. And so I played this at church. <laughs> and I remember. Uh, I mean, I don't think anybody could really hear me. And if they did, they were just, uh, they didn't know what to say. So, yeah, that was a thing. All right. And, um, but then I had other songs like, um, just like love songs and and then I started doing covers and then I there was this uh open mic in Webster Groves it was called like Pony Espresso it was uh right in Old Orchard and I would go to that sometimes and but mostly it was just uh it was just uh my friends yeah. in my basement and us um any recordings of Permanent oh, PMS? Man, there's no pictures of me <laughs> from that. I So, okay. So I, you know, it's like, if you've ever met me before, I was like this 
you know, pretty ordinary, kind of pretty blonde girl. And then like something happened in the eighth grade. Like that summer, I like, I think I almost lost my virginity and like I was writing music and I got into like dark stuff. I like cut all my hair off. I had Liberty spikes. I shaved my eyebrows off. And I think I went by Roxy at the time. I like changed my name to Roxy. (laughs) And, uh, you know, I got into just like... kind of the like a bad group of bad kids we were all i mean they're good kids we were kids but we definitely messed up a lot and um after that summer i i think i was smoking a cigarette and i was at school and uh and i was hiding out in this garage and i saw a can of gasoline and i just uh i don't know i guess i wanted the day off and so I just poured the gasoline all over this place and like lined it, you know, like let it out the door, shut the door and lit it. And I got uh, impulse control is really important. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's how I got the name Ellen the Felon. I set fire to my high school and I did like, I think it was like $895,000 worth of damage oh, back man. in like 2001. And, um, so I spent most of the time from when I was like 15 to 18 in like state facilities. Like I remember going to, to juvenile detention and, uh, getting my GED and then I got out and then they sent me to like a kitty rehab and, and then, uh, eventually I went into division of youth services and that was the only place that straightened me out. Like, uh, you know, like military style, make our beds and do group restraints. They were you know, no security officers there. Like everything was done by the group. So you really had to like learn to work together. And then, um, yeah. Oh, so yeah, I played a lot of piano during that time too. Right. Uh, like on my breaks, like there was this cafeteria in, in the juvenile detention center and they had a piano in there. And I remember my, my DJO, she, uh, I told her I played piano, and so I played for her, and she was like, "You don't need to be in here. You're you made a big mistake, but uh, but you don't need to be in here." Yeah. And I, I'm so grateful that I didn't hurt anybody like that. It was a big fire, um, and it was also like right after like all the like all the Columbine and nine eleven stuff, so people were just freaked out sure. too. So they thought I was like a terrorist. There was like a petition going to have me put in jail for the rest of my life, you know. Uh, all right. So anyway, I <clears throat> straightened up eventually. I got out and and I met a I met a guy who had just gotten out of Texas prison, and that was like, whoa, we're the same. I just got out of juvie. You just get out of te- so yeah. There's a no. They're totally different things. This guy was jacked up and messed up, and um, so I anyway. I had a few years of my life where it was like just uh, dating really bad bad men, and uh, and then I kicked them to the curb eventually. And luckily, I didn't wind up with like you know thinking that that's a norm. And I got into Ani DeFranco and open mics, and um, and then I started playing music, and I finally, I finally dated a normal person, and he uh, introduced me to like the Vultures and the Rum Drum Ramblers, and the first time I came to Off Broadway was with him, and and I just met all these people, and I found. I found so much love like that was real yeah. in the music scene. And, um, and I know to this day, years later, like if anything were to happen to me and something did, you know, I've been sick like the right. past year, like people, the community in the music scene is, they will do anything for you. Absolutely. So. Yeah. It's a, uh, it was very, uh, very cool to see, uh, even people to rally around and and lift you up when you, when you need a time uh, in a time of need, you know. That was sure. that was really uh, special to see. Uh but yeah, that's uh that's I mean, we definitely 
uh, stand up for our own around here. Like that's what's really great about our music scene. It's really tight knit in that sense that uh, we all look out for each other and and like I said, got a hand up when you need it. So uh, yeah, that uh, uh, I you know not, I, I didn't really I didn't know all that. Like that was uh, I thought Ellen the Felon was just a fun fun name because it rhymed and all that but like uh, i didn't realize there was all the the backstory the the street cred there <laughs> and stuff uh actually having uh earned that name uh for the felon part uh but uh that uh but now you are uh it's just uh ellen hilton cook right yeah i feel like ellen the felon was it was great for when i was first starting off and i mean i had business cards that said ellen the felon and i I was obnoxiously yeah. like overdoing it on the PR uh, for myself when I first started. Like I would go out and wear the most ridiculous outfits and have like flyers with pieces of candy attached to them. And I would like go busk in the loop. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that was also a time when I really did need people to remember Ellen the Felon and people still remember it. They still sure. call me. I don't have like any bad feelings about it but I also kind of feel like it's a little uh it's kind of like jokester rhymey uh I don't know I, I think I outgrew it yeah and I just felt like going by my real name right so yeah are you uh I guess um we do have a, a show coming up let's get this out there before we get too far into it more uh you can come see ellen hilton cook at uh the halo bar on thursday may 30th and you will uh you'll be playing after amanda palmer at uh-huh. the pageant yeah so that's gonna be a cool night it's very exciting yeah so last time amanda palmer played here was with the dresden dolls is about 10 years ago almost 10 years ago maybe eight uh but i like pushed my way to the top it was a sold out show at the pageant i pushed my way and the security guard let me put my uh my flyer on top of the stage and she like picked up my flyer and announced to the entire uh sold out pageant that like oh and by the way ellen the felon is playing after me you guys should all check her out and she's gorgeous i was like oh my god i can't believe you just did this and so like um i'm playing my set and I look at the end of the bar and she's sitting right there and she watched my set. And so I jokingly started playing one of her songs. Um, and then she got up on Matt Ryland's kit on his drum kit. And like, we played this little set together and she tweeted about me and, uh, anyway, so it's kind of like, it's going to be a fun show on Thursday. I mean, she has a kid now and like her life is different and you know, I don't feel like, I can't like call her and be like, "Hey, girlfriend!" Like, by the way, I'm playing again after your set. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, that's yeah, that's very cool. That uh, kind of come full circle, you know. Whatever, eight, eight years later, get to get to see her again, and hopefully, yeah. hopefully, she'll come uh, join you again in the Halo Bar, and yeah, that'd be fun. To it. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, that's exciting. Uh, that's a, I don't know, you know, even just like you said, a, t- a tweet. Like, I've I've been. Um, I've had a couple of things like that, like just somebody you really admire, like that, like says something nice or, you know, just says, you know, even says your name, acknowledges who you are. And it's like, that's the best feeling ever. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. just like no, anything else could happen tonight, but that, that moment was incredible, like an, an unforgettable kind of thing. So like, it's really cool to, when you have those kind of things like that with people that you really re- admire. Uh, so I, uh, I definitely know I can relate to the, you know, screaming like that and like oh, yeah. lo- losing it a little bit and stuff. I don't know. I, my face when I'm fangirling out is very much like resting bitch face. And I don't know how I do that. Cause I think my eyes just get kind of, I like freeze like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> um, but yeah, that I, I used to play with a drummer for a long time. Matt is, he's one of my best friends still to this day. Uh, who knows? Maybe yeah. someday we'll get we'll play again. We've kind of talked about it, but never done anything about it. Yeah, I did see some uh, some like uh, your, your like lo-fi Cherokee video uh, and stuff with Matt, and a couple other things on on YouTube. Uh, watched some older videos, and uh, so it was uh, it was definitely fun. I mean, like 
to see some of that stuff and yeah, kind of go back and relive those moments. Um, so you pretty much, uh, this show will be just solo. solo. Yeah. yeah. I've been working on really, um, really, gosh, I, I want to say pimping out my solo <laughs> career. Uh, <laughs> I've been talking to an exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> Making it over the top. I have a, a chaos pad and I have like three looping pedals and I have a metalhead distortion pedal and like an Akai mini play and my keyboard and my own like uh, board and everything. And I've just been really filling out the sounds with um, with a, it's less like, I mean, I'm always going to be like a drama theatrical vaudeville queen type of girl, but uh I don't, whatever. I, I don't like what I just said. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> but, but I'm trying to focus a lot more on instrumentation and, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So. You have another, uh, live appearance, uh, coming up in June also with, uh, this will be a part of the RFT showcase this year and, yeah. uh, that happens on uh, June twenty second to and uh, twenty third, so Saturday, Sunday, yeah, the whole weekend. I believe I'm playing Saturday. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure where or when yet, but you can like my Facebook page. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen Hilton Cook. More details. More details to come. Yep. Yeah. You uh, have you done that uh, showcase before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, last year was the first year I hadn't done it in a long time. Okay. Um, I haven't, I haven't, I mean, I've definitely been aware of it and, and seen it, uh, but I've never been able to actually make it out there. But it's like, it seems like a, a really uh, amazing day because like so many of my friends are, you know, like a, what, a hundred X or something it's like that. It's a big party. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun. I think my favorite one had to have been, there was this band called the Monads, which they were so good. They were like cow punk. Um, but they, they, it used to be in the, in the loop. And so, you know, where like the drum circles were in the loop, there's like that concrete thing where like the, uh, like where Chuck Berry's at now, right? Somewhere yeah, in that area. Yeah. Kind of around there. Um, anyway, they had a stage there and the monads filled up like for real, like 5,000 water balloons. And as a surprise, like brought, it was a hot summer day and they brought all these water balloons out and I think they got in into some trouble because oh. of like people chucking them at sound equipment and but that had to have been just like the craziest most awesome live music experience was it like an rft showcase and the monads did that and so yeah that was fun i think i saw the trip daddies after that i mean it was yeah that was a different time in my life yeah <laughs> right uh, but yeah that uh i don't know I, I know just like again this year is just stacked full of Amazing talent, uh, and uh, so that's gonna be a, a great day. And uh, this now it's uh, moved over to the the Grove area on uh, right on Manchester. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. which I guess they basically shut down the the Grove there and just yeah. bar hop from uh, venue to venue and stuff, and get live music all over the place in there. Yeah, I think you can get like a, if you get wristbands right now, they're cheaper than if you were to just show up the day of. Um, so, so yeah. yeah, anybody looking to go for sure. Snag a wristband today, yeah. save a few bucks. Sure. Um, well, let's, uh, let's kind of get more into the, what, uh, what you're doing today with music. Like you said, this is kind of more, you're focusing more on, on your, uh, your, your sound and your, uh, being a solo performer and stuff. And, uh, is there, uh, are we working on, um, a, a new project, a new EP or album or anything? Yeah. Or? Yeah, so I, I've always, I've been kind of like, I want to record all these songs that I never recorded, but I also want to keep things fresh and uh, relative to my life, and my current life. Um, yeah, I plan on, I plan on releasing a solo album among other projects that I want to release too. Mm -hmm. um, I have this idea to have, like a lullaby. Like just a, like I want a playlist of like lullaby songs that are like really low beats per minute and just uh, like calming effects like as like a therapy type of 
situation. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the solo album will be coming out soon. It's a completely, I don't know about completely different. I still have like, I still have that like jazz rock kind of piano sound, but I also like have a million other effects and sounds that I add into the loop. Um, so it, it's a little different than just piano and drums. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That, um, I think that would be cool though. Like you're saying, like there's, I feel like there's, you know, music has so many different ways to affect people. You know, obviously we, we use it in all sorts of different varieties, uh, of life and stuff. But I think like a, a, even a record of lullabies, like something really peaceful like that would like, you know, there's definitely a, a purpose for all that. Right. Um, I was taught, I had a, recently had a conversation with, uh, typewriter Tim, uh, who's working on a project of like throat singing for his, oh. for his, uh, you know, his massage therapy and stuff. So okay. it's like, you know, it's kind of crazy to think that he's, uh, you know, that's a soothing sound to put out there and for his, his therapy practices and stuff. So, yeah. you know, maybe something like that could be used for that too. So. Well, I started listening to like sleep hypnosis podcasts just because I, I wanted to fall asleep. Um, and sometimes I listen to him and I think, what is this new age bullshit? Like, oh my gosh, am I going to like have to align my chakras or something? Which, whatever, I'm not trying to poke fun at that. It just seems like too much for me. But then I eventually go to sleep and like I'm subconsciously listening to this lady tell me that I'm a powerful, st strong woman or something. And I wake up and I'm like, hey. I am a powerful, strong woman. And it just like kind of helps. Um, so I am really into like tapping into the subconscious. And also I have been curious about beats per minute in relation to like your resting heart rate and um, how pop music or certain styles of music that have like a higher beat per minute can affect your, your mood in good and bad ways. Um, and your physical health. So that's, that's something that would be kind of tied into the lullaby album. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be like, you are a beautiful soft seal and you deserve plenty of fish from your caretaker. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, maybe I will. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do, right. you, do you listen to much podcasting Are you, besides trying to fall asleep to it? Oh, uh, yeah. I listen to I listen to a lot of NPR stuff. I listen to All Songs Considered and a lot of songwriter podcasts, um, a lot of things on like, uh, I had a little, little bit where I was listening to nothing but like entrepreneur podcasts and then I was trying to like, you know, make popcorn at home and sell it for a living. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, like as much as I love music, I don't really listen to a, a lot of music ones, m music podcast. I listen to a lot of comedy mostly. Oh it, yeah. Uh, just cause it helps, helps me throughout my day. It makes me laugh and have fun and, and, uh, makes passes the time for sure. But there's some good ones out yeah. there for sure. <clears throat> but I, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's only those, I just haven't really found a, um, a good music one that I like, uh, for, you know, for national stuff. So like, I don't know. I, I was wondering if there was, do you have, a, what are those names of those, uh, songwriter oh, yeah. ones? All, all songs considered is really good. Yeah. Um, there's some on like songwriter songwriting techniques that I like. I'm looking right now. Yeah. Um, Rolling Stone music now is a good one. I just feel like a lot of times we just need to be, Oh, yeah, 20,000 Hertz. It's spelled H-E-R-T-Z. That's a good one. All Songs Considered is my favorite. Yeah. I have to listen to that. Um, to check it out. Songcraft. Spotlight on songwriters. There's one called, I do I do uh, have listened to some of them, depending on the song, but there's one called Song uh, Exploder. And I like it. Uh, it basically, I like breaks down each song and like kind of oh, talking cool. about it, you know some of the stories behind them and stuff like that so this one's cool it's uh stuff from the b-side which has like they have an entire 
they have like a couple back to back podcasts that just explain music theory from the very ground up like in an easy way. So that's a that's a cool one. Nice. For sure. Yeah. We'll get out there and check these out if you're into some into other music podcast. Um yeah, I don't know. It's cool because like it's it's fun for me like actually doing this because like I be, I've become a fan of my own show, you know? It's like I don't yeah. know I don't know, I don't play it. It doesn't sound like narcissistic or anything, but like when I'm doing my show, <clears throat> you know, I'm talking to you and uh like you're always thinking of like the next move, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're thinking of where this conversation is going to go. What's the next question and stuff. So it's nice whenever I can listen to it as a fan and just sit back and enjoy the show for what it is. And then actually, uh, you know, listen to it as a fan instead of dissecting it as a host and stuff and, right. and all that. So, um, but, uh, I've been having a ton of fun doing this show and like getting to meet all kinds of cool people all around the city and getting to share their stories and songs and everything. So, yeah, having the time of my life doing this one so i encourage anybody that's like uh, has any interest in doing podcasting or anything to grab a mic and go do it because yeah, def- it's fun i definitely have thought about it myself i would love to just interview random people yeah. not i not like you interview random people <laughs> right. i want to interview random people like <laughs> i'm always curious as to like why this guy I see on the street all the time, like, where did he grow up? Sure. What was his life like? What got him to where he is? Or I've, I've considered doing some of that, like, to an extent. I, we actually sort of did one. We did, I did a podcast with uh, Sarah Pearl, a uh, comedian, and, uh, and a Denny's. And we got to, like, me and her started talking to our waitress, uh, kind of getting her story. Nice. And, uh, and she, on the mic, started kind of filling us in a little bit on some of her stuff so it was kind of i mean we didn't like fully get into it but it was fun to kind of get know her a little bit too so um you know so that's what's kind of the fun of it especially doing it live like that like in a random you know denny's or wherever like we've done i did one in taco bell with bobby j cox and we did the same kind of thing started talking started talking to the taco bell staff and like so um so that kind of stuff's definitely fun to see what happens and but yeah, like I, I definitely with you on that. Like it'd be interesting to kind of get to know some more about, you know, people in, in their situ- different situations and stuff. So yeah. But yeah, I would uh, I would say do it. I mean, if you got if you're thinking about it, I mean that's the biggest thing is people just afraid to take a chance a lot of times. Right. Uh, you know, so it's just like I try to encourage anybody that's thinking about it, grab a mic and go do it. I mean, like, can you imagine just like everybody has a story to tell? Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, and everybody wants to tell their not everybody, but most people want to don't mind telling their story. Right. Because it depends on who you are. Sure. Yep. Well, we uh, like I said, we got these uh, shows coming up. You can also get involved with Ellen online. I, again, uh, we said uh, Elton Hilton Cook on your Facebook page and uh, find yeah, some, or Instagram, whichever. Yeah, and uh, we do. Uh, you have the record uh bang 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 out there yeah that's um under ellen the felon though yeah yeah i was listening to that it was uh, some really good stuff on there i liked a lot uh what cross marketing that was uh one that i was it was really jamming along to and stuff yeah i'm definitely gonna get back to cross marketing is like a an eight minute long song with yeah. like fifteen thousand different changes so i've been getting back into that kind of writing and less um
I feel like I'm doing both. Like I'm writing like kind of pop songs. They just kind of roll, roll out like super easily. Um, or I'm doing like orchestrated pieces. Mm-hmm. I am Eileen Hilton Cook, the composer now. <laughs> Don't fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one I did want to ask you too uh, is something I've, I've found fun to asking people. Uh, but uh, say there's a an Ellen Cook action figure. Um, what come? What's going to be come with your action figure? It will have um, tattoos on its leg and a cat and a dog Here you go. and a piano. And glitter bombs and um, <laughs> red lipstick. And I think if you like, there's like a little knob on its back. And Ellen Hilton Cook, the action figure, has two moods. One of which is like screaming manic and the other one is just really sad. Yeah. <laughs> is, is there is there a pull string on that? Actually? Yeah. <laughs> Come check me out at the Halo Bar. <laughs> Come check me out at the Halo Bar this Thursday. <laughs> uh, that uh, what uh, was um, what was you mentioned the leg tattoo and uh, you got what uh, there's keyboard yeah. keys on there on your uh, piano keys on your on your foot there and. I have a, yeah, I've got piano keys and then I have lyrics that, um, I had a boyfriend who was a musician, Dave Haggerty. He, we were in a car accident and he didn't make it. He was, he was so talented and so amazing, but he wrote this song about me. And so it's a, it's a line from the song and it says, adventure will catch her by surprise and pull her toward the best parts of the city between beneath around all the hard gray lines, no shame, no guilt, no hate, no pity. And and I kind of live by those words, like adventure catching me by surprise. And I'm very much like supportive of St. Louis and um, finding the best things in it. And especially no shame, no guilt, no hate, no pity. Yeah. That's, that's something to live by. Yeah, for sure. That, uh, well, I'm sorry to hear about that, that you're uh, with Dave, but, uh, yeah. It's nice that you can pay tribute, in a sense, to that way uh, by wearing those lyrics on your on your skin now. Yeah. And uh, uh, well, that's uh, yeah. I was wondering about the story behind some of that, and it's a really uh, it's a really neat piece though you have. And uh, yeah, uh, I didn't really. Uh, there's a what Alan's uh, pictures uh, you posted recently that yeah. you can kind of you got to uh, see the some you of the ink see work. A little bit of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dave was in this band called Fatback and the Griner Brothers. He was in a, reg- a reggae band called like a Shaka Rum Jum Reggae. And, uh, but Fatback was the big one. They were, yeah, they were great. Uh, yeah. I was just looking at a video from back in the day. Um, they used to play here at Off Broadway okay. all the time and sold out shows. Dave wrote this song called uh, Hey Pretty Lady, Take a Look at My Legs. And there was this one night that I just had so many shots of tequila that I was like, all the ladies are getting up and we're going to show off our legs. So like a bunch of us girls got up on stage and just bombarded the stage. And then it became like a a tradition that everybody would get up on stage whenever that song played. Yeah. And then I think, God, Dave had this idea since it's like, hey, pretty lady, take a look at my legs. Whenever they released their EP, he wore these horrible, like, cabbage patch looking, like, uh, pantyhose things on his legs with stuffing in them. So his legs looked so gross. (laughs) And he wore these jeans on top of them, like these giant jeans that were like snap offs. And so whenever he went to go sing that uh, chorus, he like snapped off these jeans right. <laughs> and these nasty cabbage patch legs <laughs> anyway there yeah he was such a goofball All right <laughs> he was he was like my 
yeah. I feel like uh, he was so amazing. He touched everybody. He taught guitar lessons. And um, and so, yeah, if you were to say the name Dave Haggerty to anybody that works at Off-Broadway, they, he had his uh, guitar studio downstairs. And, okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, that, uh, yeah. Uh, well, again, uh, come on out Thursday night yeah. to Halo Bar. Uh, and uh, see Ellen. Uh, you can, uh, even if you're not going to the Amanda Palmer show, you can come in to Halo Bar for free that evening and see yeah. the show. Uh, what's like a 10, 10 30, 11, something like that? I think uh, 9 30. No, oh, 9 30. 9 30 okay. or 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's after the after their show, right. like directly after. So I'm not sure. Sh- yeah, I'm not sure how long she's going to take. Right. Well, come on by Halo Bar again, and then also uh, grab your wristband today for the RFT showcase happening on June 22nd and 23rd yes. in the Grove, and get involved with everything else online with uh, Ellen on Facebook and Instagram. But uh, I really appreciate you doing this, Ellen. I'm glad this worked out, um, yeah. and we, I would love to do it again soon when uh, when you have this uh the lullaby record ready to go or yeah, whatever sure. whatever the next project is i would love to help and talk about that too so absolutely um so thank you again for doing this and i will thank see you. you soon yeah bye everyone holler
Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.